Looking out of my window, I could see nothing but white. White snow, white ice, even the trees were all white. The wind was swirling so hard, I couldn't tell if it were still snowing or if the whiteout was being caused by snow already on the ground. Adding to my distraught, it was Christmas morning. I had been up before dawn, 4.30 a.m., tromping my way through knee-deep snow, taking horses out to the paddocks then monkeying out stalls filled with urine and horse feces and the strong smell of ammonia. So bad, it burned your eyes. Meanwhile, my family back in South Carolina was waking up to a morning of opening gifts and preparing for the Christmas dinner. Friend, like I said last week, you will not want to miss the rest of this story. But let me first welcome you to this day of worship and renewal of the Spirit. Getting back to Christmas morning, my now 15-year-old wife had gone back to sleep. Sleeping was most likely her antidote for being so homesick. We both were. Since it was Christmas Day, I thought just maybe my parents would accept a collect phone call from me. That's the way it was done in the days of hard lines. My middle sister answered the phone, then told our daddy it was me calling and asked if she could accept the charges. I could hear him in the background, give her permission, but adding, tell him we can only talk for a few minutes. This is long distance. She first asked if we had snow up there, then added, I wish we had snow. Yes, I replied, we have snow, and no, you do not wish you had this kind of snow. Of course, being from and living in the state of South Carolina, she had no idea of what I was talking about. When my dad got on the phone, I told him I wish I could be there for Christmas. Then he painfully reminded me of one of the reasons I had left when he said these words. Son, he responded, when you make your bed hard, you have to lie on it. Speaking next with my mom, she followed up with telling me I had a wife now and a good job, $60 a week and a place to stay, so I'd better hang on to it. Coming to my senses, I realized there would be no welcoming home for me like Say the father in the Bible who welcomed his son home who had went astray. Sadly, I hung up the phone. For those who don't remember this particular scripture of the prodigal son, let me read this one verse. It comes from Luke 15, verse 31. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. What a father. Just a quick update from last week's message. In the fall of 69, just following that fantastic eventful summer of 69, our parents had signed then mailed notarized papers for me and my girlfriend to get married in New York. Yep. 14 and 16 years old, running away from home, almost a thousand miles, and now we are married. Neither of us had ever been problem children for our parents. Never picked up by the police, never suspended from school, but obviously not wanted very much. The minister who agreed to perform the simple ceremony was somewhat reluctant when we arrived and he saw how young we were. But when I told him who my employer was, he quickly agreed to go forward with it. Then commented that she also supported his church. Now one might ask, just who was this influential employer, a person who just the mention of her name got things done? Her full legal name was Miss Wilhelmina Stewart Kirby Waller. Even though her name has persuaded the officiant to perform our simple ceremony, when I mentioned we might like to visit his church for Sunday services, the minister quickly interrupted by saying we were from a less formal religious background and probably would not enjoy their services. He did offer to make some calls to see if there were another pastor in the area who would like to come visit with us. However, we never heard from the first one. Friend, let me ask you this question. 
These people who separate themselves from others who worship the same God as we do, what would they do when they get to heaven? There's no formal or informal heaven. Amen. Let's get back to my employer for a moment. As stern as she was, she was also very smart. Remember, her complete name was Wilhelmina Stewart Kirby Waller. Kirby was her maiden name. Her father had founded and owned the Kirby Vacuum Cleaner Company, which was known worldwide. After her inheritance, it was said Miss Waller was the richest lady in America. This is a small clip from her obituary in 2004. Wilhelmina Stewart Kirby Waller served tirelessly on many national and state commissions and held a seat on the President's Citizens Advisory Council on Environmental Quality under three presidents, Nixon, Ford, and George Bush. President Nixon and Governor Nelson Rockefeller often made personal visits to her home when campaigning for office. They wanted money, and they wanted her old support, too. Nelson Rockefeller served as governor of New York from 1959 to 1973, and then as vice president. It was said that Miss Waller often engaged in heated arguments with the governor while he was in office. Folks, I know it sounds like I'm getting away from the format of a typical message. However, I firmly believe if I show the way God kept me, provided for me, and blessed me, if I take you along this journey, which incidentally is sometimes painful for me to even recall, if I do this, instead of just only reading scripture from the Bible and commenting, you, my friend, are far more likely to believe God can and will do the same for you as he did for me. Amen? Somebody say amen. It was prior to one of these high-level political visits to Tanrack and Farm, the FBI, Secret Service, and the local police began their usual pre-visit security preparation. Even though we barn workers were not invited to the big house for the event, everyone was required to give extensive background information. Then we were told our movement would be restricted to the barns and the paddocks. I really wanted to say I met President Nixon, but that was completely out of the question. The closest I came was seeing his limousine as it turned up the long driveway to the mansion on the hilltop. It was because of this event I said to my barn partner, Robert Mitchell, that I was going to be one of them one day. One of who I remember him asking. Robert was a huge, brawny black guy and spoke deep. One of those police investigators I stated. Now, his reply is what would normally discourage a person. However, it was one of the things which heightened my determination. Looking at me with a smirk on his face, Robert said, you wish, and I hate to be the one to break the bad news to you, but you will never be nothing but a stable boy. He ended by saying, you don't even have enough education to become a foreman on this farm. Then he laughs and walks away. Neighbor, there's an old saying which goes like this. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. If you don't already know it, nothing could be further from the truth. His words did hurt me. They pierced my very soul. And from that day forward, every time somebody told me I couldn't do something I said I wanted to do, it lit a fire within me, a fire which cannot be distinguished until I complete the task God has set before me. Just a few short days after this conversation with my naysaying friend and partner, while I was taking the horses out to the paddock, I noticed this gray station wagon working its way down the long dirt road. I was confronted by none other than Miss Wilhelmina Kirby Waller. Yep, she never said more than two or three words to me up to now, but she found out I had lied about my age and my wife's age. Also, a friend of hers in South Carolina who just happened to live in Camden, the town I was from, 
informed her the police were looking for us and a nationwide bulletin had been sent out. Friend, my heart fell to my stomach. Even though our parents knew, I didn't know what she was about to do. If I were going to have to make a move, it had to be quick. Folks, I must say that our time for this week is up. But please join us next week for the conclusion of the non-prodigal son. You'll be glad you did. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for making the path for us to follow. Dear God, even in the times we strayed from your direction, you still loved us, guided us, prodded us to come back to you. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who also began in a lowly stable. We now understand how privileged we were to be led to that far away place. How it humbled us and then propelled us to grow. It is in your son's holy name we pray these things. Amen and amen.